Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a balloon and a CD float across the ground. <laughs> So I got super bored and I decided it was time uh, for us to make something. So the plan is today to show you guys how to make a hovercraft. But it's going to be a really, really simple hovercraft that you can make at home. I'm excited for it. So the things we're going to need today while we do this, we'll need a pair of scissors, a straw, a rubber band, a bottle cap of some kind, balloon and a CD. Any kind of CD will work. It doesn't have to be a special music CD. It can just be just like this one. This is just an old computer CD that I'm using. Let's move. Now that we know what we're going to need, move some stuff out of the way. Uh, the only part, oh, you will also need a hot glue gun of some kind. Mine's a little and adorable until um, I finally decide to break down and buy a new one. But that one still works for now. So the first thing I'm going to need to do, I need to take my bottle cap. And I'm either going to use a knife of some kind, like a utility knife. Or if uh, someone is available to help you out, you can always use just a big drill. I'm going to go ahead and use a drill. What I want to do is I want to cut a small hole, or drill in this case, quarter inch hole through the top of my bottle cap. What that's going to do is that's actually going to allow me to take the straw and fit it directly through the bottle cap so it can come out the other side, which is going to be a really important thing to do. But since I don't want to drill into my work table, um, here's one. Sacrificial piece of wood. Here we go. Uh, also, I don't really want to hold on to this with my hands, especially since I'm going to be using a drill right next to it. So, here, there's some. I'm going to grab some channel locks. You can use regular pliers if you want to. Uh, these just happen to be right here. They're just a funny kind of plier. Lock that on there so it won't move. Mm, go down. Mm -mm -mm. So. And again, I'm just using this little piece of wood because I don't, if I do go all the way through, I don't want to drill into the top of my workbench. It's been torn up enough over the years. So real slow. Rank, 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 rank. And whoop. There we go. It's not the cleanest hole, but it's definitely a hole. You can see some of that stuff hanging off. The edge. You know what I might do is I might take my utility knife anyways or scissors work just fine uh, for doing this. You don't have to use anything that you don't already have permission to use or even better get your family to do this with you. Whoop, got a little deep on that side. Get your family to do this with you and then you guys can all make one. You can make a couple different ones. So I got my hole. It's it's big enough. Sure, why not? I'm not worried about making it a little bit too big. If I do, that's not going to be a huge problem. As long as I can fit the straw through it, but it's not super wobbly that it just kind of boom or that it just you know falls out. Uh, if you do cut your hole a little bit too big, there's still a way to salvage it. No worries. So I got my hole. I'm ready to go. Done with my drill, move that out of the way. Done with my channel locks, move those out of the way. So, so what I want to do is I actually want to take my straw, and I don't really actually need very much of it. I only need, I don't know, two inches or so. If you're really, really OCD like I am, you can take your ruler, mark, oh, two inches is a lot. Let's say, let's say inch and a half. So I'll mark around an inch and a half and just drink. Woohoo! get that. So now I'm done with this big piece. You can 
uh, actually, you know, save it for a later project. We are going to be using this later on something else to build that. All this stuff you should be able to find somewhere in your house. The only thing that I had trouble finding actually was the rubber band. Uh, this was the only regular rubber band I was able to find in my entire house, even looking through my garage. But if you have hair rubber bands, that would probably work. You might be able to use tape of some kind. If you've got masking tape floating around, you could probably check that out. It might work. Gosh, even duct tape. Um, I'll show you what we're going to do with that here a little bit later. So we got our lid hole in the top of it just a little bit, a little tiny piece of straw. Now I'm going to stick this through and what I want to make sure that I do is I want to pull it through until the bottom side of the lid is sticking out farther than the straw is. I don't want to be able to see the straw on the bottom half of the lid at all. In fact, if I can, I want it a little bit farther up so that the straw, when you look at it, it sticks through the lid, but not far enough that if I set it down, the straw would touch the table at all. I don't want that. Now what I'm going to do with this little guy is on the top side, I'm going to put it down. I'm going to grab my hot glue gun that's ready to go. If you don't have a hot glue gun, uh, you can use Silly Putty, you could use Play-Doh, um, probably even use, gosh, do I have any up here? Um, I don't, but you could probably even use just like white Elmer's glue. Um, the only thing I've actually gotten even close is wood glue. I wouldn't use wood glue. It doesn't work very well on anything except wood. But use some kind of glue or some type of putty. You're not really gluing the straw in place. Really, all you're trying to do is seal around the straw so that no air is going to be able to get in from the side of the straw down through the lid. You want all the air that goes through the straw to have to come out the bottom half. You don't want it to leak at all. So if I were to blow in there, no air could come back out through where the straw goes through the lid. That's really the only thing that you're trying to do on that step at all. So like I said, if you if you don't have a hot glue gun, try and use Elmer's glue, you probably have to wait and sit and let it really, really cure for a long time if you did that. Hot glue, I found, really just works faster than anything else. Um, now, while we wait for this to dry, this is going to be the base. And eventually, once this is nice and dry, we are going to glue that base, bunk, bang on, right there. Now, again, like I said, I decided to use uh, a CD form um, just because uh, I happen to have a giant stack of these laying around. Ask your family uh, what to use. If you don't have a CD, um, you could, gosh, I don't know. You could probably use even a paper plate, a uh, Frisbee. Oh, I actually, I'm in the middle of trying to make one using a Frisbee. As you can see, I've drilled my little hole in preparation, just like the hole from the CD, just like that. So, a hovercraft works and it can glide over things, any any kind of surface, whether it's rough or water. Um, I'm not sure this is gonna be able to glide over water. But the way that a hovercraft works is that when the air gets pushed down through it, on the bottom of that hovercraft, it, it has a, a, a pocket of air that it actually sits on, kind of like a little cushion. So as the air goes through the top, it has to be able to go somewhere. I mean, as we know, air isn't, isn't nothing. As, as we've done a bunch of times, if you wave your hand in front of your face, you can feel the air hitting your hand. I mean, if you blow, you can feel the air hitting your hand. The air has substance. It, it even actually has mass. It takes up room. So when I push air through this hole in the CD, it has to go somewhere. So if it's flat against a, a 
uh, against another surface like this and I push that air, force air through that hole, it has to go somewhere. But since the CD is sitting flat on another surface, the only way that it has to go out is if the CD picks up just a, just a little bit. Now it doesn't have to go very far for the air to get out. As you know, air can go through extremely small holes. But it's gonna pick up just enough that the air will be able to escape. So now, why would this be able to zip around on a surface? If, if the air's picking the CD up just a little bit, how, how would that allow the entire CD to move? Well, that's because when it pushes up on the CD, it doesn't just push up on one side. Because the CD is a completely, completely flat shape, because the CD has equal weight all the way around it, it has no choice but to pick up every edge of the CD at once. I mean, when it starts to push up on this side, well, this side kind of starts to feel a little left out. So it wants to go up just a little bit as well. So when I force air through the top of the CD, which is what we'll be doing as soon as this little guy dries, when we try and force air through that, it's got to come out the bottom side. It has to come out the bottom. So the CD will actually be riding on a very small cushion of air. So let's check in. Let's see how dry this is. Um, well, yeah, don't do what I just did. I literally grabbed it and I'm like, hmm, let's see if hot glue is dry. Touch. So if it wasn't dry, that would have hurt a lot. Don't do that. But now that I know that it's dry, and you can always usually tell when you first pump the hot glue in, it's usually uh, a clear, very, very clear, like you're looking through a window clear. And now I can see it's kind of started to get a little bit cloudy, a lot like the hot glue that I started with. Um, a safer idea and a better idea is to just put it on there, walk away for 10 minutes, come back after 10 minutes, it'll be nice and hard. <gasps> and will have cooled down a little bit. What? What? Garage dogs. What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Okay, go see. Go on. You too, go. Dogs have no interest in science. They only care about other dogs that are barking. Anyways, hot glue, nice and dry. Totally good to go, and we're ready. So my next step, I'm gonna take my CD, and it doesn't matter which side of the CD I use. Um, I think if I run my fingers over this, I can feel just the slightest bumps around the words. And I really, really want my surface to be perfectly flat. So I think I'm gonna use this other side. I'm gonna have this as the bottom. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put that down and I'm gonna take my, my new straw lid combo that I've done. And you can always check to see if it's sealed just blow through the one end and you can tell all the air is coming out of there. In fact, if I seal it against my hand and try and blow through, maybe use the back. Oh yeah. Use the squishy part of my hand. Oh, there we go. Nice and fleshy. I'm going to try and blow into it and no air comes out. Oh, yeah. Nice and sealed. So this one's good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and set this CD right over the top of this hole right here in the middle. Set that lid right on there so it completely covers it. So if I were to flip it upside down, I'd see the straw coming right through that hole. That's my goal. I'm gonna take him, put him on there, and yes, you guessed it. The next step is more hot glue. Now this step, we do actually wanna be able to make sure that the lid does not come off of the CD or the plate or the Frisbee or whatever you are using. But again, the real goal is to seal. What? Ugh. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Video card was full on the 
on the GoPro that I'm using over here. So as I was saying, the real goal of this step, we want to make sure that this guy doesn't come detached from the CD, but again, really want to make sure that you get the whole thing good and glued because again, I have to be able to seal where the lid and the CD meet because I can't have any air escape out from under that lid. As soon as that starts to happen, and as soon as air is able to come out from under the lid, the whole thing's toast. You're not gonna get the proper lift that you want. So again, this is a step, got a ton of hot glue on there. We know that this is gonna take a little bit of time to cool or to cure or, or whatever you want to call it. So uh, if I'm doing this at home with my family, I'm going to put a bunch of my glue on there or my uh, putty or Play-Doh, whatever's going to get me a good, good, tight, strong seal. Get that shot on there and then I'm going to walk away for five to ten minutes. Really want to make sure that I'm not going to burn myself or I'm not going to have uh, my katsa or my little brother or sister, one of my smaller siblings, burn themselves when I come back to finish my project. So we'll give this some time to cool, and then we'll come back and we'll finish it up. Okay, guys, we're back, I'm giving it about five minutes to cool off. And like I said, as you can see, that, that hot glue around the edge has started to turn cloudy again. That's how I know that it's cool enough to touch when it finally starts to look a lot like the raw hot glue stick again and it's not that super clear crystal clear uh, that it is when you first pump that out I just realized I don't have my glasses on I can barely see anything that's better anyways so the next and the final step is to get air down into my hovercraft now the way that we're gonna do that is with the balloon and the rubber band that we used earlier. Um, I'm thinking there might be a better way to do this, but I'm gonna show you this way first. That way you can reuse it. And then if you can think of a better way to do this, if you can think of a more efficient way and a more reusable way, I guess is what I would say, then I need you to go ahead and send me an email or even better, Give me a, send us a video with yours that you made and how you have improved on this. But again, the way that hovercrafts work is I'm gonna force air down through this straw and since it has nowhere to go, but air has mass, air has, has volume, it, it takes up space. It's not nothing, it's, it's a real thing. That air is gonna to wanna to go somewhere and the only way for that to happen is if it picks up this CD just a little bit so the air can actually escape out the bottom. Now that everything's nice and on there, the first thing or the last thing you're gonna check before we put our balloon on there is you wanna make sure if you're looking at the bottom, if you're looking at it from the side, that your straw is not past the very edge of the CD. If your straw is, that'll be your top. If your straw is sticking out on this side at all, even just the tiniest, tiniest bit, it's not gonna work. So if that's the case, Grab your scissors and you can reach in there real carefully. If you need to, you can trim off part of your straw or really actually even go to town. You don't really need much straw sticking out through the bottom of the cap at all. That was just to help you get that glued on there. So, balloon, rubber band. What I'm gonna do, simply take my balloon and fit it onto the end of the straw like this. I'm not gonna blow it up yet, of course. And then I'm gonna take my rubber band, and just like I would if this was my, if this was the, the straw with the balloon over the top of it, I'm gonna take my rubber band, and I'm gonna twist it, whack, twist it, whack, twist it, whack. Oh, you see my finger getting red. I gotta get it on there nice and tight, nice and tight. Just like uh, if you've ever helped someone put a ponytail into their hair, you're gonna do the same thing on your balloon and your straw. So let's get that guy on there. And then you gonna make sure that your balloon comes out the top of your rubber band. It doesn't get stuck in there like this when you wrap your rubber band around it because then you're toast and you're not gonna have any room 
to blow air into your balloon. So let me, my giant monkey hands trying to do this. And I know that when I'm doing this, I can feel that straw kind of starting to bend and, and almost to collapse a little bit. So I want to make sure that I don't destroy the straw. I don't want to make it so tight that the straw squishes and no air can go through it at all. But I do have to have it tight enough that no air will come out of the bottom of the balloon unless it's going through the straw. So, like if I look in there, if I look in there real close, I hope that focuses, you can kind of see that the straw itself has, has kind of been squished a little bit, but I can still see some some room that the air should be able to get through down on those those dark spots so we should be good to go but balloons nice and tight on there it's not going to fall off easy way to test it is to try and blow it up mr morgan we put the bottom of the balloon on the straw how do we blow it up well guess what where's the straw go it was right there can i just blow it up like this i mean you're gonna look funny but that's what you're gonna do. So literally, just put your mouse up against the bottom of your CD and make sure it's nice and clean first. Rub that on my clean lab coat. And then you're just gonna hold your CD. I might even hold my balloon a little bit just in case it really wants to shoot off. And I'm just gonna try and blow into the bottom of the CD like this. <sighs> Whoo! So that was a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. So that means two things. That means I didn't stretch out my balloon like I needed to. Stretch out your balloon nice and tight. And it also, it might mean that my balloon or my straw is just too pinched closed. So I'm gonna try and find just a really tight one. Ooh, there it is, I can see it in there. I'm gonna try and take maybe one of these wraps off. Let's see if that helps that no that really didn't seem to do much at all okay because uh, the rubber band has a tendency to try and crimp down on itself so let's just take a rubber band completely off if you didn't have this problem awesome then your thing's already going to town your hovercraft is probably already floating across the table or across the floor uh, if you're going to do it on the floor, make sure it's a really smooth surface. Linoleum or wood, hardwood floors seem to work really, really well. Um, if you're smooth, finished concrete. It won't work on asphalt. It won't work on any surface that's really, really bumpy. Because if you use a surface that's got too many bumps in it, when I set the CD down on it, you can see all those spots under the CD where the air is still going to be able to escape. So it has to be a really, really smooth surface so that when you set your CD, it basically seals all the way down against the ground. So let's try this again. Balloon, back on the straw. I promise this worked the first time I tried it. I did a proof of concept for you guys just to make sure it was gonna work. I think I just got my balloon too tight on my straw. Kinda, ooh, yeah, you can see that my straws a little bit scrunched there. You didn't, you didn't do well. I put them way too tight on there. Okay, so let's try this again. Uh, a little looser this time. How many is that? Four. We'll try. I just don't think that's quite tight enough. So we'll try one, one more. There. Now you can see that. Part of my rubber band's a little loose, but if you look down in there, those first couple wraps that I did, those really, those really squeezed down on the balloon. And the reason is, I mean, usually this wouldn't work if I was trying to put my hair up or something. I mean, not my hair, but if I was trying to put it like in my beard or trying to do a ponytail for one of my daughters, leaving the rubber band this loose would do nothing. It would instantly just fall right out. But since it's rubber trying to grip onto rubber, the rubber of the balloon, it actually really kind of cinches down almost like a type of Velcro and doesn't allow it to come off. So now we'll try it again. I got my balloon on there. 
so nice and strong, won't fall off. I'm gonna hold it on there and we'll see if this one blows up any easier. Whew, it's still hard, but it's way easier than it was the last time. Oh man, all the air fell out. So as soon as you blow it up, you're gonna to wanna to pinch off the balloon. Remember, don't pinch the straw. You'll actually be able to feel the straw in there. But I'm gonna pinch above the straw onto the balloon so all the air gets trapped in my balloon. Let's try that. There you go. So I just pull it out a little bit, able to pinch that off. Now, the real test. If I set this on something really, really smooth, find something really smooth, it should just kind of float right around. So let me grab this lid. There we go. Grab this lid. This is from uh, the case that usually holds all the PLA for the 3D printer that the GoPro is actually sitting on right now. Okay, so this is a really, really smooth and very, very flat surface. So if this worked, I should be able to set this down on here. And when the air tries to force down out of the balloon, it's only got one place to go and it's out of that little tiny, tiny hole right there. So in theory, it should have to force the whole CD up just enough so that the CD is actually gonna be riding on that tiny little cushion of air and you should just be able to push it back and forth and it should move really, really easily. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that, look at that. It's almost like I'm playing air hockey. Look how easy that moves. Oh my gosh. Now, as soon as my air cushion goes away, now, yeah, see now it's much harder to move. So with that air cushion under there, it was really easy. Just one little tap, really sent it going. But as soon as that's gone, now I'm just pushing against the CD again. So it's creating that layer of friction. And that friction, as we already know, that's the, the enemy of movement. Friction is the enemy of energy. It really drains all the energy and the movement out of an object. So if we can get rid of the friction, then we'll have easier movement. The way that we're getting rid of friction with this guy is by forcing that air through the bottom of the CD again and forcing the CD to ride on that little cushion of air. Let's try this again. Whew. I know I gotta look ridiculous when I do that, don't I? Here we just do it again. Okay, now that it's all blown up, I got it pinched off just like that. I'm gonna set it down and it should be able again, just to nice and simple. Yeah, right on that little cushion of air. Look how easy that goes. I don't even have to hit it. Just pick this up and whoo, it goes crazy. Yeah, but as soon as that cushion of air goes away, look at that. Now it barely moves. I have to shake it. Uh, 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 friction has robbed all my movement. No. Oh man, this is awesome. I love the fact that this worked. First try. Now, if you can think of a better way to attach the balloon to the straw so that we don't have to fight that every single time, man, I sure would like to know it. I would love for you guys to try these. Try this, build some with your families, build some with your little siblings, whoever's at your house now, just remember, trying to come up with programs and, and, and things like this, these experiments that we can do with things that you already have in your house. So if you don't have any CDs, try a paper plate. I don't know, try a Frisbee. See if that's gonna work for you guys. I have a feeling it will. I mean, I know that the Frisbee's not flat on the bottom. It's got that lip like this. But again, when I set it down, that edge of the Frisbee or the paper plate, whatever you're using, should go completely flat against the ground and should cause it to, to like I said, almost seal against the ground. So that when I force air through this hole, it only has one place to go and that's down. But when it gets trapped under there, it's gotta be able to lift it up just a little bit. So in theory, Frisbee should work. In theory, paper plate should work. If instead of holding the paper plate like you would even eat, again, try flip it upside out, see what happens. If you have CDs, we know they work. We just built one. It was awesome. Build it. I want a video, 
I want a picture of it working. Do whatever you gotta do. I would love for you to send us emails or, or send me a text message or send Mrs. Baldwin a text message or video, message us on Facebook. Heck, even better, put it on our Facebook page. Love you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. We'll see you next time.